And we are back. We are live here at Okayama International Raceway for Formula Drift Japan. Round five and the final round of the 2017 series. As you can see, it's still raining. If you're with us here this morning for the top 32, the weather still raining down a bit. And we'll be starting the top 16 very shortly. Hello, everyone out there. My name is Alexi Smith. Otherwise known as Noriaro on YouTube. I'm here with Ryan Lantain. Otherwise known as one of those guys who judges in the FD series in the United States. They really moved our camera on us, didn't they? They did. Uh, the, well, the camera used to be over there. In the but rain. It was getting rained on. Yeah. So they moved it over here. Good for them. So good for them. Uh, which means we'll probably be able to use this camera a bit more now because it won't be all covered with uh, water and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, welcome wherever you're watching from all around the world. I can see there's people watching from uh, everywhere, even the European guys. Thanks for staying up or being, getting up with us. Real troopers. Uh, real troopers. Also, of course, North America. Uh, it is getting quite late at night. So, uh, hopefully you're having a, good, a nice night in with us here to watch some amazing drifting. Even the top 32 has been uh, a roller coaster of emotions so far. Of course, we had the Mad Mike Widette versus Andrew Gray fight in the top 32. And, whoa, that, was, uh, that went from uh, left to right, didn't it? It certainly it did. It went the full gamut of emotions there. Mad Mike in his lead run. Close to flawless. In his lead run, it's like, I got this. And then his chase run, a big understeer on the first corner, unfortunately, behind Andrew Gray. Andrew Gray completing his run without issue, which means it is now even closer within his reach right there. Andrew Gray, three in a row, a hat trick of championships for Formula Drift Japan. Potentially. Potentially. Now, there is still a guy out there who can ruin it for him, and that is uh, Shinji Minoa. Now, of course, we had uh, Andrew, Andrew Gray, of course, first in the points. Mad Mike Widette had a chance. If he'd have knocked Andrew Gray out, he had, would have had a serious chance of taking this out in the last round. Unfortunately, no, knocking himself out. And, of course, uh, Champ Yamashita also getting knocked out in the top 32, losing to Fukada. So that is what the fight for the championship looks like. As far as uh, the winner of today is concerned, like I said, right there in the middle of the screen, Fukada, his best result of the year so far in his wet conditions. Of course, we have there, just on the left of the screen there, Naoto Suenaga in the Team Orange S15. He really, really, really wants to win this. And of course, there, James Tang in the BMW. Looking very good this weekend. Uh, if you ask him, he'll just tell you he's getting very lucky. But uh, his driving has been on point. And of course, other drivers, like, for example, Ichianagi in the Team Zeke yellow one via. Great angle from him all weekend. Very clean driver. But, of course, we still have a couple of other people in the mix, such as uh, Kuni, Kuniaki, former champion of D1 Grand Prix. He's out here this weekend. He has a good chance of winning this. Also, uh, Nobushige Kumakubo, just there in the, uh, just to the right of screen, in the Alteza from Team Orange, another former D1 Grand Prix champion. That's nothing to, that's not forgetting Yokoi, also in the top 16. And uh, guys like Fujinaka in his rotary. So the only rotary remaining in the weekend. We were expecting it to be uh, the quad rotor, but it's unfortunately only the, the three rotor out here for the top 16. Fujinaka running a 20B engine in his car. So this is your lineup. This is your top 16 battles. And we're about to have the Japanese national anthem.
Right, so there you have it. Look at the pretty colors. So check, check, our system is working. Hello, that's us over here on the right of screen, right on the far right, sorry, far left. That's, uh, that's stage right, not uh, camera right. In the tent, we are right above the action here on the straight. Did we skip over your koi? So this is, uh, with the drivers not getting out of their cars, understandable, we don't, we don't want them getting wet. Yeah, so that was our Fujinaka we just saw going up against Yokoi. Our next two drivers, Teramachi here. Very aggressive driver. It should be interesting to see how he goes up against Shinji Minoa, who's currently one of two people who can potentially take out the championship from this round. Shinji Minoa, the Z34 Fairlady Z, R30, sorry, R35 GTR engine in that car. Our next two drivers, Fukada. Never getting great results. He's been in every round this season. But performing very well both in qualifying and... Yeah, you can wave now. There you go. In qualifying and in competition. Doing very well so far. This is his chance to get a good result for the 2017 series. Because he's going up against Nobushige Kumakubo, the boss of Team Orange, in his Alteza. Our next two drivers. Now, this is an interesting lineup. Very old school, very experienced driver, former champion, Kuniaki Takahashi, going up against this guy here, Yanaguida, straight out of high school, low power, low budget car, through to the top 16. Going up against another underdog, uh, Michi Mimoto, in the top 32. Now this is going to be a good one. Both these guys, every day they're at Ebisu Circuit. Tsunaga, of course, works at ABC Circuit. Andrew Gray has a business on the premises. Naoto Tsunaga from Team Orange. Tsuiso Joto, you can see their high-level tandem drift. Their motto, Team Orange. It's going to be quite uh, awkward on Monday if uh, Tsunaga takes out Andrew Gray in this battle. I wouldn't be surprised if either of them win this battle. Our next two... We have Jin Harino in the S15, Sylvia. Yeah, they're the wrong way around. That's why the graphics are mixed up. There should be... Uh, that should have been Harino being introduced first. Sorry, uh, Yamada introduced first. You have Kenji Yamada, Jamaken, Team Wish, S15, Sylvia. Our next two drivers. We have there James Tang. 2JZ powered BMW. It's going up against this driver here, the bright yellow Zeke power 1VR of Ichianagi. Angle king of this uh, competition so far. And our final two drivers in the top 16. We have Takashi Hinome. Making his way through to the top 16 after uh, a spin from Morozumi in the previous battle. Going up against this guy here, Junior Ishikawa. Junior's uh, face shot there. Everything about him is just sort of uh, understated, isn't it? He's driving, his car, his uh, expression, but uh, gets the job done. We'll see if he can make it through to the finals here today. So this is your top 16 bracket for round five, final round of the 2017 series of Formula Drift Japan here at Okayama. So quite a lot of people out there, a lot of favorites, a lot of for, multiple former champions of various series from around the world. Of course, we have James Tang, our international entrant, and of course, Andrew Gray, who's a, essentially a Japanese driver these days, but uh, formerly Scotland. This should make for some interesting battles. It was legit this time. <laughs> people probably heard that. They're wondering what we're talking about, punching people in the face. Okay, we're back. We're back at Formula Drift Japan here at Okayama International Aquatic Center. Otherwise known as Okayama International Circuit. It's wet. It's raining. 
But here's the thing. It's been raining all weekend since the beginning of practice until now. Constantly raining. It did stop actually last night for a little bit. A little bit. Uh, but uh, as soon as we woke up this morning, I opened the blinds of the little uh, hotel. What do, you, like, uh, what do you call that over there? You can actually see them in the camera right now. Oh, yeah. See those, see those white buildings just there? That's where we're staying. It's so good. It is. Uh, just it's walk to the track. Just get up in the morning and saunter on over. Yeah. We have uh, a restaurant here as well with a nice buffet. I'd say the chef is uh, pretty well trained as well. Some of the food that he's been preparing has been... He makes the best croissants I've had outside of Paris. Wow. Phenomenal croissants. Yeah, they, were very, they, are, they were very tasty. He knows yeah. what he's doing. Say, say it again. How do you say croissant. it? Croissant. 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 Very nice. So, uh, yeah, I had a, I had a big uh, uh, bit of slice of uh, roast beef at lunch. It was uh, excellent. It was pretty good. Pretty gotta good. Admit, it's a bit different to what we normally get, the food we get uh, at track, the good old, uh, <laughs> the good old bento, bento box. If you don't know, know what a bento box is, uh, it's a... Uh, Just guess don't a, worry about it. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. It's, <laughs> a, it's, a, it's a tray of various food. It's, it's meant to be eaten cold, essentially. Uh, it can be quite tasty. Bought at a 7-Eleven or a yeah. Lawson's or Yeah. I mean, I, you do have them. It, it's sort of better when you're not eating them in the cold because then they get really cold and the rice gets all kind of cold yeah. and sticky. and Yeah. So not I thought, very enjoyable. Not in, in the summer, it can be quite nice. But uh, in winter, it's a bit, yeah. Well, if you say so. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you have for lunch today? You and Kevin, the uh, technical director. They made us hamburgers. They made you hamburgers. Just, just Kevin and I. Just, that's yeah. it. Special request for the for the American and the and, yeah, the, and the for the Yank and the <laughs> and the uh, what and do the you call Canuck. Canadian and the Canuck. Yeah. Hamburgers. Make the hamburgers. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We're pretty. Uh, so we are very well looked after here at yes. Formula Drift, which very means well. we're going to go hardcore for the next couple of hours or so. Top 16 all the way through to the final battle. Starting off with Masashi Yokoi. The ninja. I feel justified in calling him that. Yeah. Yokoi. Look at him just sitting there. That car's going the wrong way. One headlight. That's the wrong driver anyway. We're looking that for is the wrong driver. We're looking for Fujinaka in the 20B rotary. He should be coming out of the burnout box very shortly. Our start line guy once again. Oh, I, I learned a secret about him over lunch. Oh, what's that? He has a weatherproof jacket of sorts underneath his Formula Drift shirt. Really? So he lets his Formula Drift shirt get soaking wet. Right. But underneath that is the waterproof kind of jacket thing uh -huh. you can't see. He didn't want to wear the jacket over top because it would hide the Formula Drift logos. And he knows he's on camera, so he said, I'm going to put it underneath. Now, the pants, I'm not sure. The pants might just be wet with bare legs underneath, which would be miserable. Uh, but at least his top, he's, he's not, uh, not wet. Hang on a sec. So he, because he was going to be on camera like he is right now, yes. like directing these warriors into position to start their battle, yes. he wanted to show the Formula Drift logo on his back. Look at him right now. He looks glorious. That's out there cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. We've got to find out his name. And here so we, we were thinking all along that he was getting he was wet. Just being an, an idiot, <laughs> yeah. getting wet on purpose. But no, he's... Uh, Wow, that's dedication to it the is. job right there. He is the starter. Look at him. Here we go. Okay, okay. Here we go. First battle of the top 16, Yokoi versus Fujinaka. Both these guys, very experienced fighters. Performing very well so far this morning in qualifying and in the battles. Here comes Yokoi. Big entry from Yokoi all the way to the edge of the track. Fujinaka Whoa. right on him. Hit Contact. Him. Fujinaka and Yokoi. Yokoi smashing that limiter. All the way out towards the wall. Yokoi, big angle there. Through that little splash there, no problem. Flicking it back in a clip and over the finish line. Unfortunately for him, Fujinaka will be heavily deducted for that contact and spin there. Was Fujinaka a rare chance to drive this track? Making full advantage of that opportunity right now. As we can see there, no problem completing the rest of the course. Ah, that's a shame there. That was looking to be a very good battle. Let's watch this replay. So once again, battle so we just saw there. From our perspective, we could see that Fujinaka was pretty close to Yokoi. But in this view that we have right here, it's hard to tell the depth. But he's actually very close right now. 
uh, as we switch cameras. Right there. Actually, that, there's the hit right there. It was yep, pretty, pretty quick. Yeah. Pretty easy to see that contact. Yeah. So you can see it right there. Uh, Yokoi, I don't think uh, there, I don't think there was any funny business there. He was uh, maintaining pace. He wasn't slowing down aggressively. Uh, he wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary. So that is something that would be most likely held against Fujinaka in the chase. Uh, just getting a little bit too aggressive and not able to slow himself down enough to avoid contact. It's going to be a fairly simple decision for that battle, but of course we still do have one more to go. Fujinaka will be in the lead for the second, so that's a replay. Let's watch this replay once again. This side yeah, view. This is the view. This is the good view. Just right there. Yeah. It's only a light tap. It was. Didn't take much, did it? No, but see, the problem with that too is uh, when that wheel comes into contact with the car in front, because it, it is actually at angle, the wheel rubs on the door and the wheel starts to slow down. Mm -hmm. And what that is almost like is a braking effect. So imagine the front right wheel of Fujinaka's car suddenly having a brake applied to it. It's just going to uh, rotate the car around that wheel. Exactly. Which caused him to spin out. So if he hadn't have come into contact with Yokoi, he probably wouldn't have spun out like that. But there's not a whole lot he could have done about it, really. I mean, if he saw that the contact was coming, he could have potentially pulled the handbrake, steered out of the drift a little bit to try and keep it away from Yokoi. But uh, it was a very slow approach, which means he didn't really, uh, probably didn't predict it was going to happen. Okay, next run now. Fujinaka on the right of screen in the lead this time. Once again, very fast entry from both these guys. Wow, Fujinaka's car really has a lot of speed on the entry. But Yokoi riding that line, great line from both these guys. Switch back, Yokoi getting pulled away from a bit. But of course, Yokoi doesn't really need to go 120% on this run. He just needs to keep it exactly right where he is. Oh, I would have liked to see it a little bit closer towards the end of the, of the run. But I think it's going to be enough to get Yokoi the win. Let's watch the replay once again. Wow, Fujinaka's car really fast. Fast on the approach. Look at this. Up through the gears. Little stab of the brakes there. Get the rear unsettled. Great entry from both of these guys. Really, really good approach. Look at that. Yokoi stepping out the rear of the car. Slowing it down a little bit. But then losing out a little bit here to Fujinaka. Who's always been very fast. Now, it's a, it's a big thing to be faster than Yokoi in this competition. Yokoi, one of the faster guys here. And switch back up over the finish line. So I think it's going to be a fairly simple result there. Unfortunately, due to that spin from Fujinaka on his chase run. That's pretty hard to overcome. So Yokoi, the blue S15 Sylvia rider screen. One, two, three. So Fujinaka, unfortunately, getting knocked out there. Yokoi moving on to the great eight. So this has championship implications, this battle right here. We have right. Teramachi against Manoa. Manoa is in second place in the championship right now. Only, what, eight points, five points, seven points? Somewhere uh, around there. Somewhere around that. Not behind. a lot of points, put it that way. Not very far behind uh, Andrew Gray. Right. So if Teramachi takes Manoa out, then um, Gray, even if Gray goes out in this round, Gray will still win the championship because he will have an equivalent amount of points given to him uh, than Manoa. Did qualifying have any sort of effect on the championship? Um... Because uh, Andy did... Who and, qualified and, higher? Uh, uh, well, uh, Minoa did. Minoa did. Minoa uh, qualified fourth, I believe, yesterday. Ninth. No, ninth, sorry. Ninth, and Gray Andrew was 18th. Gray was 18th. Um, I can't remember the points, how that would work out, but it, it would only be a couple of points, so I think okay. Gray's technically still in the lead right now. He would right still now. be in the lead. Yeah. All right, so here we go. So championship on the line here for Minoa, but Teramachi, it's been quite consistent all day. When I say consistent, I mean consistently wow, crazy. Close. That's incredible. Very close. Contact, wow. a little bit of contact, wow. but they're still going. This is the closest battle we've seen so <laughs> far. Minoa, all in, all chips on the table here. But Teramachi, the angle of Teramachi, deep into that outer zone there, leaving Minoa behind slightly. But that first part of the course by Minoa, here we go, it's a chance to catch up a bit. And Minoa capitalizing on that the big angle of Teramachi. Teramachi always getting big angle and slowing down as, as a result. Minoa reading this run very well. Wow, look at this. Here comes the replay. 
so that proximity and initiation from our view it might be hard to tell again directly on like this but he is directly directly on he's him right on now. his door right there right there look how close they are there was contact right yeah, there too. a little rub right there incredible yeah very nicely done by Manoa it's just he went a little bit wide right there which made him fall back just a little bit but Teramachi doing a great job he was off a little bit on the zone but yeah. definitely not trying to get away big no. angle no. he's not running that low angle fast line you know trying to get away he's doing everything he needs to do he just made a slight error there but um, nothing yeah. major no. clearly uh, both very comfortable with one another here you go you can see watch this from this view right here Whoa, and a little bit of contact yeah, here. Just, just a little rub on the door. You can see the little black mark on the yeah. door there. Yep. So that, we, we just, we, Amazing. we call that contact as opposed to a collision. So yep. that's totally chill. We don't have to give fault or anything for that. It's uh, what we want to see, really. Robin's racing sort of Got thing it. as far yeah. as uh, this is concerned. Not an impact, just a slight tap on the door. And Ted Amachi would have heard that. That is the driver's door. It kind of flexed in a little bit there, too. That would have uh, made a lot of noise. All right, so second run now. Yeah, Minoa. Minoa is an odd driver. You talk to him in person, he seems like a very sort of nervous, uh, easily uh, shaken kind of guy. But when you get him behind the wheel... Yeah, he, he transforms, he? transforms he? into a beast like we see now. Look at him pulling away from the start. He's going to... Look, look how fast he's going already. Look at the big gap between these two. Huge angle. It's going to be a spin. Oh, a half no. spin for Tadamachi. Tadamachi losing out. Shinji Minoa co continuing his run. Minoa needs to complete his run here. He does. He can't spin out, though. All right, there we go. So, safe finish. There we go. And almost a spin over the... Yeah, so Teramachi. Looks like it's going to be a, a loss to Teramachi. So Minoa. This makes things interesting. Let's watch the replay here. And look at the gap between Teramachi and Minoa on the entry. Compare it to the uh, their first run. They are a fair way apart. Hmm. Uh, yep. Yeah, and it's keeping yeah. it on the track. Teramachi. Did well there on outside zone two. He did. Good through three as well. Shinji, even though there's no one with him right now, he's continuing the run, doing what he needs to do. Nice in clip there. I like that line from the outside zone three to inside clip two. That was a good run. So Shinji yeah. Minoa in the 370 Fair Lady. One, two, three in favor of Shinji Minoa. So Shinji, one step closer to potentially taking the championship of this series away from Andrew Gray. Andrew Gray needs to win in top 16 if he wants to keep his chances alive now for the championship. Otherwise, Manoa will take it from him. So this next battle uh, between, well, not next, I mean, in, the, uh, in a couple of battles from now, Suinaga versus Gray, it's going to be absolutely essential that Andrew Gray wins this battle against Naoto Suinaga, the Suiso Joto high-level tandem drift driver you know that interesting. during that battle andrew gray was praying <laughs> that manoa would spin go off track or yeah. just lose somehow uh so that his championship would be sealed at that point but now it's making it vital 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 for andrew gray to move on from top 16 to uh the top eight i'd just so. like to say at this point hello to the power vehicles team watching the live stream down in the pits <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how you feeling <laughs> Pressure's on, boys. Pressure's on. Well, we're, we're, we're cheering for everybody no matter what. We hope it's going to be a good battle. Yeah. Of course, so it doesn't make a difference for us up here, but no, well, for them down for them, there, it's yeah. making a big difference. It's a big difference, yes. yeah. <laughs> All right. So Either way, we get a good show, right? We get a good show. You at home get a good show. And speaking of good shows, here's, this is going to be an interesting one. Mm -hmm. For Carter, in the lead on this run, first time he's done as well as he has in this year's season. He's up against Kumakuba. Now, Kumakuba, this isn't his regular car. He doesn't seem to be as used to it. Whoa, Whoa. it's going to be very close. <laughs> Look how close they are. And that wasn't even making contact there. Transition back. This is a very slow lead run from Fukata. 
giving Kumakuba a lot of chances here to get right up next to him. Big angle from Fukada in the lead there, but Kumik watch this, Kumakuba catching right up. Watch the switch back here. Kumakuba is going to try and tuck in. Stay with him over the finish line. Hmm. Wow. Accelerator control. Traction. That was a human traction control there from Kumakuba on that chase run. Phenomenal proximity. Right Amazing. from initiation through to outside zone one. But we're going to see a bit of an error from uh, Kumakubo there in outside zone yeah, one. But great initiation right here. Look at his car positioning. Perfectly right in the right spot. Right there. That's exactly what you want to see. But you're going to see him stay a little bit on the inside, which puts him in an awkward position on transition, which gives Fukada a little bit of a, a pull on him right there. Yeah. Fukada fills outside, outside zone two really well. Outside zone three as well. Did a good job there. Kumukubo did also, but the proximity suffered just a little bit. He had a little bobble there on transition, but managed to stay in proximity to through the finish. That entry there from Kumukubo. Okay, watch it from this angle. So this is going to be for the uh, highlight reel of 2017 for sure. <laughs> Here we go. Just, uh, just in, he d he inserts himself. In. He just slides right there. in yeah. there. And then, of course, we do see Fukada going off there a little bit. So yeah. that's also against him. And, and he right kind of stalled up right he there, stalled right? stalled up. Yeah, yeah but Kumukubo is doing a great job. Yeah keeping his drift going as well. So uh, a lot of pluses and minuses for both these guys, especially Kumakubo. A lot of big pluses, but also some fairly big mistakes from him as well. Not mistakes, but... Uh, some of them forced, not, you know, yeah. not by his own hand. That's true. The lead car did make that error coming off outside zone one, but he was in kind of an awkward position too, so it's almost like a hand-in-hand -hand mistake. But uh, let's see what they can do in the opposite positions now. So Fikata seems very comfortable in these conditions here this weekend in his car. Let's see what we can do on the entry. Kumakubo entering nice and early. Fukata as well, just sliding in there. Once again, oh, this is a great look this line. Perfect line from both these guys. But the transition, Kumakubo, his superior speed. A little bit shallow on the angle there from the lead car. Fukata needing to take a bit of a shallow line in order to catch back up. Transition back. Great transition from both of these guys. Fukata maybe a little bit late on the transition. Wow, another great battle here in the rain at Okayama. Both of these slide, sliding in like the girls slide into my DMs. That's Easy smooth. Easy now. Easy now. That's smooth. Watch this. Fukata. Look at the rate to angle from both these guys. Nice and smooth, holding that angle, which is Fukata just gets in there, riding that line right at the edge of the track. Both these guys, wow, that's the best tandem outside, out zone one we've seen so far this weekend. But there, just there. Kumakubo keeping his traction on the rear tires, rocketing out of that outer zone one, down the hill, and keeping that distance away from Fukata the entire time. It's just sort of... Uh, High level of control there. I think overall, Kumakubo is showing a high level of control. And two in favor of Kumakubo. All three judges in favor of Nobishige Kumakubo. Team Orange, Alteza. Unfortunately for Fukata, amazing performance from him on the chase run. That was an amazing chase run for Fukata. Very smooth. You'd hate to lose after a chase run like that, but he did make some big mistakes on his lead run. So unfortunately, getting knocked out in the top 16, Kumakubo moving on to the great eight. Has it been a while since he's competed, I wonder, Kumakubo? Uh, three years, I think. Three years. He's still got it. I think it's been three years since he's actually done a competition like this. I wonder what motivated him to participate. Uh, has participated in Formula Drift Japan in the past. He has. Uh, Kumukubo came along as a spotter, I believe, That's or right. a, to help the team kind yep. of thing. Yep. Um, but uh, we kind of asked him from time to time, you know, why aren't you competing? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. And then he showed up here. So it's nice to see him competing with us. Yeah. We actually were at his home track, uh, Ebisu, and he didn't compete there, but he made the trek all the way down here. He was on my flight, actually. I didn't even know until we landed. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> he came running over. and. Oh, Ryan! Yeah, but I thought I saw him in Tokyo, but I wasn't sure. I was like, nah, that's not Kubo Kubo. Why he's, would he he's, had a, he's had a bit of a different haircut recently, so maybe, maybe you recognize why. him. <laughs> but he came to uh, Irwindale as well. That's right. The finale at Irwindale. He was over there at Irwindale. There. Yeah. 
he, you can tell he's a real true fan of the sport. He wasn't just in it because yeah. to be cool or whatever. He just loves the sport. Yeah, he's sort of taken on a managerial sort of thing. Look at the jump here of Yanaguida. He knows he's up against a battleship of a car in front. Big Oof. power. Oof. Huge gap between these two. Now, Yanaguida, smaller, lighter car. Can he tuck it in there? Well, let him catch up. Huh. Wow, great job from Yanaguida. Look at this. The little S13 getting in there. Oh, oh. big understeer. No. Yanaguida losing the drift. After out of zone two, that's a huge understeer. Big mistake from him. Oh no, after such a good run so far. David and Goliath battle this one. Yeah, he may. So this is the tough part, timing your launch. If you're in a slower car in the chase position, you are yeah. allowed to jump the light. You are. But you have to time it so well. And... He maybe misjudged it a little bit, but like you said, he didn't really make too many compromises here to actually get back into proximity. So that yeah, was that, very impressive. Really good. Uh, Takahashi, decent line around there. He's a little bit late getting into the zone, but once he got in there, he was right on the line. Right here, right on that line. Yeah. Perfect. Yanaguida straightens up there a little bit. Yep. Taniguchi out wide to the wall. Sorry, Takahashi. Takahashi. Sorry. Transition here looks smooth. Uh, Yanaguida was right there. He actually did a very good job considering uh, that poor start that he had. So, very impressive. So that run there between Takashi and Yanagrida. Yeah, Takashi, veteran of the sport. Former champion. Yanagrida still fresh to the world of competitive drifting. Still great run from him there if he wasn't for that uh, mistake. These cars literally brightening up our day here at Okayama. These grey wet conditions. Got the banana yellow Mark X and the acid lime green S13. Right, here we go. This time Yanaguida in the lead. In the lead with a disadvantage. So Takahashi giving him a lot of space. Sliding in there. Now Takahashi, very shallow angle from him. But... He's only about one-third the way through the run. If Takashi can just stay with him for this entire run, it's going to be a fairly easy win for him. Whoa, right. slowing down a lot. Takahashi doing everything he can to keep the drift going. Yeah, that didn't look easy. Okay, so smart strategy from Takahashi, giving Yanagrida a lot of space on the entry and then sort of sliding in there. Very shallow angle, though. But he probably knew that if he did, if he could just catch up with Yanagrida by the end of outer zone one and just keep him the, right on his front bumper for the rest of the run. So you can right here, bit shallow, but there from here, right here onwards, switch back, switch back again. Yanagrida did a great job on the zones. He did one and two, three wasn't as deep maybe, and then he slowed up right here, way inside yeah, on that on the rumble there. strip, and it seemed to. Uh, he seemed to lose a lot of momentum in that area. I, mean, I don't know what, if he was contemplating maybe anticipating the uh, the puddles that were there, the water. I'm not sure what yeah. was going on there. But you could tell that Ta Ta Takahashi. Takahashi didn't have a lot of room no, he in was, that area. He was really uh, working the steering wheel and handbrake to try and keep the car sideways. Yes. So Takahashi in the yellow Mark X. One, two, three in favor of Takahashi, unfortunately, for Yanaguda. Oh, that could have been a great result for Yanaguda taking out Takahashi, but unfortunately, big mistake. If it wasn't for that mistake by Yanaguda, could have potentially won that. Yeah. I could it's well within the realms of possibility from that battle we just saw there. So Yanaguda knock, knock, knocked out. So Takahashi moving on to the great eight. Right now, you have Minoa doing some kind of Whatever the equivalent of a, a rain dance is for people <laughs> losing right now <laughs> in his pit, in his pit space because he wants Suenaga to beat Gray, which will essentially give him the championship this season. That's right. You yeah. know, look, just right now, when the camera cut and it showed these two pulling up to the start line, my stomach went, it, 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 it <laughs> yeah. clenched slightly. I was like, oh, here we go. This has some serious implications. This, this is does. Big. Yeah. This is a big thing. All right, here we go. So lead car, Suenaga, being chased by Andrew Gray. Can Andrew keep it cool? enough to chase Suenaga. But Suenaga, no quarter given here. Look great, at the entry from, great, great entry from both these guys. Now, Gray, 
keeping Sunaga the same sort of distance the whole way around. Riding that line, perfect lead run from Suenaga. Andrew Gray, you need to do something right now. You've got to catch up. Huge angle from the lead car, Suenaga. Andrew Gray, no oh. way. Oh, Suenaga, very wide there. This is Andrew Gray's final chance. He's got to get in there. And off that clip, too. And way off that clip, Suenaga. Two huge mistakes at the end of the track. Uh, the wind really just picked up. It did. <laughs> Stuff's blowing away on us here. Darn. Let's watch this replay. Look at this chase from Andrew Gray. Not really a great answer to the lead run there of Suenaga as the rain flies in on us. Let's watch this replay. So this lead run from Su look at that, that initiation Suenaga. is perfect. Great. Yeah. And watch this lead car. Watch his his rear tire. Okay, out of zone right here. Slides around, great Very line precise. there. Very clean. Take a look at where Sunaga ends up on this zone. Right, right on the line almost. Gray's inside a little bit, so he's trying to take a little bit less of a line to catch up. Outside zone three, pretty equivalent, but then Sunaga goes wide here. Yeah, huge mistake. Right, and then outside zone two. Again, huge way, mistake. Oh, sorry, inside clip two, way off. Yeah. So all of a sudden, Sunaga sort of forgetting where the course was. It looked like at the end. So how will that factor into the result? Andrew Gray not making as big of a mistake as Suenaga did on that last couple of corners. Here we go. This is a very important run for Andy Gray. Andrew Gray in the lead, but remember, Suenaga, very strong chasing driver. Did they come down the straight? Bit of a gap. Bit of a gap. Still a bit of a gap. Yeah. Soon over a long way back from Andrew Gray. Andrew Gray, great line out of zone. Perfect out of zone there. Yeah. Switches it back now. Soon Oh, a bit of a wobble there. Andrew Gray. Whoa, that could have been <laughs> fatal there for Andrew Gray. But Soon right at his door. Oh, hits Colliding and a spin. Soon spinning out after colliding with Andrew Gray. Whew. Well, Ryan Lantain. Well, give me your, your thoughts. I, uh, can't, I can't talk. <laughs> All right. Well, I was impressed with Andrew Gray on outside zone one. We're going to see it right now. Sunaga actually initiates earlier than Gray, but Gray gets right out to outside zone one. Rides that line all the way around. He did a much better job there. Sunaga was off of outside zone one. Gray had a bobble on that transition right there. Kind of went low angle. Yeah, that was really yeah. scary right there. Sunaga dove in, took the opportunity. And then Gray, did he slow down there? I don't know. I think that uh, Sunaga was just a bit too close to handle yeah. that. To handle that uh, transition there. Of course, everyone is slowing down a fair bit on that part of the track. as the rain intensifies here at Okayama, as the battles heat up. We've got uh, Ryan is currently talking with the other judges, trying to make a decision. You can see the rain coming down. Whoa. Whoa, yeah, the rain is coming down there you uh, go. ferociously right now. The Oop. wind, the all, our, all our electronics are getting wet. Everything. Oh, my mobile phone. Yeah, see? More electronics getting wet. Oh. The water's just pouring off the roof now. So, so Andrew Gray slowing down, but did he slow down? Are we going to pull this table We're back? Pull the whole thing back. All right, here we go. We're receding into the tent. <laughs> Try to stay dry. Like a, like a scared turtle. Yeah. Okay, so we have a result. Andrew Gray. Andrew Gray. He's and all it. three judges for Andrew Gray. The dream is still alive <laughs> for the Scotsman. Andrew Gray knocking out Naoto Suenaga. Okay, wow. so Oof. that means that Gray and um, Manoa are still in the run for the championship because they're both moving on That's right. to the top eight. So the next battle between the uh, so the next battle for Minoa is going to be against Yokoi, and the next battle for Andrew Gray will be up against whoever wins this battle. You're about to see 
Jin Harino and Jama Ken. Now, that's interesting because well, the sun's coming out. Yeah. Andrew Gray uh, will be up against whoever comes up top in this next battle. Now, compare that to who Shinji Minoa is going up against. Yokoi. Oh. So, does Gray have a better chance yeah, your coy is, uh, of getting through? Because these two drivers, of course, take nothing away from these two guys. But uh, just looking at the uh, statistics, Yokoi seems to be a bit of a more difficult opponent. So it should be interesting. Okay, here comes our next battle now. Jin Harino in the lead. Jamaken chasing. Another S15 battle as the sun comes out here at Okayama. Drifting in a typhoon. <laughs> Creating waves here at Okayama. Very clean run from both these guys so far. Harino dropping a bit of a wheel off the edge of the track there. All the way to the wall. Harino slowing. Almost a straighten there from Harino. Trying to extend out to make it past that inner clip. Oh, a lot of good and bad points on the lead run. But Yamada just sort of staying there with him for the entire time. Let's watch this replay. Man, the sun is... Uh, and the sun has just come out. Weird how that just... Anyway. All right, so Harino here in the lead. Pretty good initiation. Yamada mimicking him somewhat. Let's see how they get through outside zone one. He's a fair way back. Yeah. Proximity is not, not ideal. Right through there, he kind of was off outside zone one a little earlier. Harino was off the inside clip. Right here, watch Yamada. Right there. He really, really lost uh, quite a big amount of angle through that section. Uh, and then Harino brought it around inside clip two. Yamada was never really able to reel him in, was he? he no. Was kind of always he did have a length. bit of a chance there as to when Harino slowed down a lot. He did slow down, you're right. Jamaken, he slowed down a lot, but uh, Jamaken also slamming on the brakes there yeah. really heavily. Just, uh, not seeming to be that confident in following Harino. Gonna re bring these guys around again. Uh oh. Oh, what did yeah, you do? Fixed it. Don't worry fixed about it. it. I okay. got it. <laughs> Digital scoring. Yeah, well, rain and Doohickey. electronics don't generally mix very well. So. Did you wipe the screen? Well, I tried to get some of the moisture it's off. It's a touch screen. You can't you can make it. Can you make it wet? It's gonna go all funny now. <laughs> Rigged. Rigged. Let's get a. We'll see if we can get a dry washcloth to. Uh, Give it another wipe. Okay, here comes the second battle now. Yamada this time in the lead. Harino. Now, Harino has a good chance to take this battle out if he plays this one right. Wow, look at him catch he's up. Closing in. He's closing, closing in. in. He needs to slow down right about now. <laughs> Whoa, and he does it. Throws on angle at the last second. But running really wide off the side of the track, giving Jamakin a big advantage in the lead. Wow, that nice line from Jamakan. Oh, that was, uh, see, Jamakan always does well in the lead, more so than the chase. Ah, oh, that was that a nice lead run. That was a very nice lead run. Harino starting off very strongly, but... I hope the, camera, the cameraman needs to go out there and maybe change the filters or the, <laughs> the, the, the ND filters, because it's getting a bit washed out right now. Let's watch this though. Watch the chase car. Wow, Harino. This is a, I know it's a hackneyed phrase, but textbook example of reeling someone in, mm -hmm. just pulling a bit of angle at the last second. But yeah, washing out wide there, running over that ripple strip. It's a different level of grip there. Yeah. And Yamada's doing everything right up front. That's right. Filling the zones. Look at his angle as he comes through. Nice and wide on outside zone three. And Harino's nowhere to be found. There's no proximity at all. There's no, there's no tandem essentially. That's right. Despite the good run there from Carino, comparing the lead runs as well. I wish I could dry off my screen. Oh, I might be able to grab one. Kantok san. Oh, he has got his headphones on. So we have a one more time. One in favor of Jamakin in the purple S15. Another split decision! 
Another split decision. This has happened quite a few times today. It's, it's the rain that just makes things go funny. Jamakan and Harino, a one more time battle between these two. So we're going to be seeing them go one more time. So they, um, the other judges, weighed, uh, essentially said that the leads were equivalent, and then that the uh, they they based it off of the the chase runs. Right. Yeah, I can see that. Let me see. Is this going to help? Bad ups. Just blow on it. Sure. And it'll dry up. There we go. Okay. Man, the rain really causes a mess, doesn't it? It does. All right. Much cleaner. Much better. All right, next battle now. James Tang. Ichiyanagi. Ichiyanagi versus James Tang. Now, this is a, this is a coin toss for so me. Ichiyanagi's leading. Ichiyanagi is leading in this run. Now, this could go one way or the other. Ichiyanagi and Tang. Oop, okay. James Tang. Okay, it looks like he jumped the start there. Remember, that's okay. Chase Car can do that. Yes, they can. Here they come down the front straight. The rain has stopped. We still have wet conditions, obviously. So, James Tang entering very late. Very late. Ichinagi to the outside of the track, just running that wide, wide line. James Tang, great imitation of the lead car. Ah, James Tang dropping a bit of a wheel off. Missing that inside clip entirely. Some good driving from James Tang, but the lead car just keeping him at arm's distance the entire time. Still keeping good line, good angle from the lead car, Ichinagi. He seems like he has a hard time with his initiation. Uh, especially when chasing, Tang does. Tang does? Um, yeah. He generally does it later than the lead, uh, later than the latest initiation point, or very near it. Also, uh, slow rate to angle as well. Yeah, well, of course, in these conditions, driving a short wheelbase car like that yeah. can be understood, but, you know, we don't take those kinds of excuses. So Ichinagi over a little bit. Tang does a good job there, but Tang puts himself in a weird position on transition All here, the drops the tire on the outside of that kind yeah. of uh, inside clip area there. Uh, falls back a little bit. He has some corrections, some bobbles through uh, that little infield section. And then Ichinagi decently close to that inside clip and across the finish line. So a good clean lead run from Ichinagi. A few fairly big mistakes from James Tang. Of course, that... Uh, that was an inside clip there under the gantry, not an outside clip. He dropped the wheel off the outside there. So he's transitioned quite late. Still there, good driving overall from James Tang, but just uh, not what he needs to do in order to take out Ichiyanagi. So, hey, the rain stopped. That's quite nice. Yeah, it is. Oh, look at the sky. Look how pretty it is right now. Look how fast those clouds are moving, though. Yeah, that blew through very quickly. Yeah, we do, well, yeah, we do have a typhoon just off the coast. Okay, next run now. James Tang. Very, very slow, late entry. Very was that slow. even before the final cone? No, I think that it looked like it was after, but very his speed overall was very low as well. Very as low speed. This is going to give a big advantage to Ichinagi. Ichinagi catching up slightly, throwing at a huge angle. Ichinagi on the limit. He needs to make it down the hill. He does that. Keeps up with James Tang. Whoa, transition back. Ichinagi's not having an easy time of it. But cleanly completes the run. Both drivers. All right, let's watch this replay, this entry from James Tang. I think he needs to uh, do a bit of practice of these sorts of entries. Yeah, it seems like the to wet. To get comfortable with yeah. uh, the car. He's initiating slow and late as opposed to at the right speed and just doing it earlier. Looks like he backed off. Oh, yeah, look yeah. at that. Wow. Yeah. He looks like he backed off and then initiated. He didn't. Right. Yeah, that's he wasn't uh, powering up to initiation. That's a big no-no there. Yeah. Yes. And he was off that clip. Just uh, his pace overall throughout the course was not, uh, was not good. It, yeah. Variable pace in areas where you wouldn't expect... Um, the speed just to, to change that way. Yeah. But Ichiyanagi did a great job of uh, maintaining proximity throughout and fought really hard to stay uh, within, within proximity and in drift at the same time. Ichinagi also very reactive to the lead car as well, altering his, uh, his driving line, angle, etc., speed. 
to react to how the lead car was tackling the course. And that's the sort of thing we want to see here. So one, two, and three judges all in favor of Kazuto Ichinagi in the yellow Zeke Wanvia. He'll be moving on to the great eight and going up against Andrew Gray. So could, ah, uh, sorry, no, that's, uh, um, that's my mistake. We're having one more time there, aren't we? Yes, we are. Uh, Ichinagi, sorry, will be going up against the winner of the next battle. And that is this here, Junya Ishikawa, Takashi Hinome. This is interesting because both of these guys have a fairly similar style. Not too overstated, not too flashy, very very down to down to earth business business oriented drifting getting the job done these are the hired assassins of the drift world just get the job done and they are doing oh it. boy oh and what's going on here this is some weird he managed to stay wow he managed <laughs> to save that Ishikawa and Hinome there's some weird drifting going on right now Ishikawa catching up to Hinome. Hinome slowing down a lot. Ooh. Ishikawa. Oh, and a straight driving there. Straight, there yeah. you go. Driving straight. Ishikawa. That's going to be a huge penalty applied to him. Right at the last moment. Big mistake. It's a big mistake from Ishikawa. Oh, sorry, from uh, Hinome in the lead position. Yeah. Let's watch this uh, replay here. Yeah, right? they were on very different lines coming from the initiation point to outside zone one. If you see so right here, cutting in just there, he ends up. I don't. Was it an understeer from and heading back out again? Ishikawa, but he ends up getting it back to angle, and makes it into outside zone one, which was pretty. Yeah. Pretty impressive. I think both like Ish Hinomiya went very shallow, and Ishikawa went wide, wide. and then they, they yeah, met. They merged. Yeah. But uh, Hinome definitely missed outside zone two there. And then right here. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Driving straight. Yeah, the wheels actually kind of yeah, wobbled around. Wobbled a bit there. Oh, the extreme bike guys are driving right now. That is amazing. Amazing. The they have a lot of <laughs> wet surface like that. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, behind the judging stand here, we have uh, a sort of a display area. With uh, food vendors and uh, parts. Ferraris. We have, uh, yeah, big Ferrari, all these uh, Liberty Walk kitted Ferraris slammed on works. So it's like they're a, it's like they're a Skyline, but it's a Ferrari. It's pretty cool stuff out there. And also the extreme bike guys are probably out there doing backflips right now. Okay, next battle now. Ishikawa versus Hinome now. Hinome is going to have a big disadvantage after that straight. Here they come, entering the first corner. Very aggressive chase there for Hinome. Pulling back slightly, though. Ishikawa surging ahead. He set himself up very well to drive the rest of his course. Hinome nowhere to be found. Ishikawa just needs to keep this clean. Flick it back. Oh, very A long way away from that, at, from that in clip, but uh, Hinome also not that close. I think it's going to be a fairly simple result from this battle. Ishikawa and Hinome. Let's watch the replay. So car on the right of screen is in the lead position. Ishikawa, nice entry there. Finish from both of these guys out to that outer zone. Watch the chase car here. Falls over the edge of the track, whereas the lead car, Ishikawa, keeps it on the uh, right side of the white line. Ishikawa there was off of outside zone two, but Hinome, oddly enough, filled outside zone two. He did. But proximity is not great. Not great. Not, not, not even okay, really. He just keeps falling off more and more, and right here you can see he's struggling to even maintain pace at all up the hill. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so it looks like we're going to get a result there. So Ishikawa in the... Ishikawa. Black S14 Sylvia. One, two, three in favor of him. He gets the win. He'll be going through to the great eight up against Ichianagi. So I suppose up next we'd have the one more time battle of Harino and Yamada. That would be right. Harino is 
So I'll write that down now. Ishikawa gets the win. Are you imitating our live announcer here? Our live announcer, Saiba. Uh, Saiba. As he's known. Gets the win. He say, it says uh, in English, gets the win. All right, so we are almost all the way through the top 16. Of course, we're not taking any sort of break. We're going straight through to the final here. So make sure you stay with us wherever you're watching from all around the world. I don't care if it's 4 a.m. You have to get up at 6 to go to work. You're going to stay with us all the way through to the final. It's the last round of the year. So here comes our one more time battle. Obviously a bit of uh, gravel and other garbage getting uh, knocked off the cars there as they pull away from the start line. It's a bit hard to see, but uh, the sky is clearing up slightly. The rain has stopped. I don't really want to say, like, I'd like to see it start raining again, but if, if the track starts to get half dry, mm, we're going to see yeah. some weird stuff start happening. <laughs> That's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who knows? I mean, we are, there is a, it is a typhoon. Yeah. You know, the rain could uh, come around on us again. Those clouds are flying right they now. They are going so fast. Yeah. We're not even that high, like, altitude here. Right. So the weather can change very quickly. This is our next battle now. This is the one more time between Harino and Yamada. Once again, nice energy from both of these guys. Harino taking quite a bit of a shallow line there. Okay, he's, he's out on the outside. Okay, Yamada on the inside of the line. He's right there with Harino. Flick back here. Look at this. Yamada surging forward. He wants to settle this now. But unable to stick with Harino. Harino pulling away. Yamada's line all shot to hell there. <laughs> it looked like Yamada straightened up a little bit after inside clip one. Uh, coming to outside zone two. We'll have to see in the replay here if yeah, it looked, it looked to me like he was trying great. to trying to make an effort to catch up with Harino and mm -hmm. stick with him. That little slight straighten there on the transition. Let's watch the replay here. So, great start from both of them. Right where you need to. Nice clean entry there from Lika Harino. Less angle from Yamada in the yeah, chase. Yeah, not quite as much. Yeah. Watch the transit. So, watch the chase car right about right here. Watch this. Right there. It's a bit of a straighten and a yeah. surge up. But unable missed outside to zone two as well. He missed outside zone, zone two completely. Missed outside zone three. And un unable to follow through yeah. with that dive. It's like you said earlier, he's really good in the lead, but in the chase he uh, can't seem to put together that clean run in the chase position. Yeah, we have seen that quite a few times this year with Jama Ken. So we'll bring them round to the start line. The hype man behind us with the uh, jumping dirt bikes is quite aggressive. Uh, I don't know if you can hear him through uh, the, the microphones here, but yeah, we have a, the hype man. His name is uh, Wada Police uh, because he always wears like a policeman's uniform. Hmm. But he has like, he looks like, what's the guy from, uh, he, looks like, he looks like a Japanese version of the guy from, was it Gas Monkey Garage? Oh, yes. The, not the guy with the beard, the other one, the Richard Rawlings. Richard Rawlings. He's like a sort of 10 years older Japanese version of Richard Rawlings. He's got all the jewelry and... What happened there? What happened there? Did Harino break? Did he stall? What happened? He Whoa. didn't leave the line. What happened there? He did yeah. not leave the line on time. Yeah, you saw did the he... car kind of jerk a little bit and it didn't move. Oh, it no, jumped. did he stall? Maybe. Oh, and no. Off, this almost. is Faisal for Harino. Did he stall on the start line? I hate to say it. Did he forget to put the car in gear? No, the car, it looked like it jumped and then didn't go. So, it may have been a stall. Well, did he did he shift it and put it in neutral or something? Wow, that's a big error. We, we rarely, rarely see that. So hopefully the replay starts all the way at the beginning. 
Okay, here we go. So watch the car on the left. So ready, go, and... Uh, then he goes. His engine stalled, perhaps? Not sure. Maybe he wasn't neutral, like you say. It's possible. But there's clearly no tandem at all there. I mean, he may have revved up. And Yamada almost messed himself up there, too. He went in almost a little too deep, but only hit the beginning of the clip, the clip that marks the beginning of the zone. So that's not going to be held too, too badly against him. I've got to admit, I've done that in a, in a competition before. What would you do, leave it in neutral? Yeah, I left it in neutral. So you revved it up and dropped the clutch and, and it nothing just revved yeah. and it didn't go anywhere. Well, uh, yeah, it just yeah, it went <laughs> whoom, and then, I, and then I slammed it into, into first. Yeah. Yeah, and it made horrible noises. Right. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I just I just held it there until it, until, until it, it actually in, went in. Until it actually went in. Oh, it was disgusting. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it's funny how we take that stuff out on our cars when yeah. it happens. It's like that was your fault, but apparently your car is going to pay the price for it. Hey, hey yeah. Yeah. Mister Yamada gets the win. Yamada gets the win. So a bit of a lucky uh, result there for Jamaken. So he is going up against Andrew Gray in the great eight yep those are clouds right there in the mountains that's a nice shot there welcome back to formula drift japan we are into the great eight here at round five final round for 2017 series so how will our next four battles go we are still in a championship fight situation And as I've repeated a million times, this is important. <laughs> this battle right here. We've had a lot of important stuff going yeah. on this weekend. Well, we keep having important battles because Manoa and Gray are involved in these important battles. And it's not that they're more important than this event's battles. Yeah. For any other reason that it's the championship. It's the championship. Championship. These guys are only a few points away. That's Shinji Manoa and Andrew Gray. So right now, Shinji Manoa is fighting for his chance to remain in the championship hunt. So what you need to know right now is Minoa on the left of the screen in the Fair Lady. He has to win this if he thinks he wants to win the overall championship. Look at that proximity there, colliding with Yokoi's car. Oh. Double spin. No, not double spin. No. Yokoi keeps in it. Minoa. Spin. He knew he had to push hard. He knew he had to be right there because Yokoi Minoa. is not going to give him an inch. Ah, oh, so Minoa, a spin there. And remember, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. But this may be the end to Shinji Minoa's chance at a title for 2017. So let's keep an eye on Yokoi at this, at this uh, entry point. We want to see what Yokoi is doing. It looked like Yokoi had a clean entry, no funny business, nothing yeah, bad happened. Pretty standard entry there. It looked like uh, he just got right inside there and just got a little too close to uh, to Yokoi. So Shinji was a little too aggressive. Yeah. But I'd like to see it from the other view. I mean, Yokoi, he held that angle the entire way around as well. Like Yokoi, he didn't wobble back and forth at all. Yokoi just threw on that angle and held it all the way to the entry of outer zone one. So no sort of wobbling back and forth. Here we go. Okay, let's watch the replay. This is very important. Watch this. Yeah, so look at the speed difference. It just looks like Shinji let the car carry in a little too much. Yokoi didn't slow down. He was doing what he was supposed to do in the lead position. Yep. Shinji just let the car creep in a little too much. He was letting the... He wanted to have that proximity, but he just got too much of it. Uh, that's a massive shame there for you, for uh, Shinji Minoa. You like this? Okay. <laughs> yeah, straight back into it. These two. This time, Minoa will be leading. So Yokoi knows he has the advantage here. Now, how is Yokoi going to play this? Minoa is fighting for his life here. <laughs> Not literally, but, yep. you know. For his life in this championship run, anyway. Look, it's the first time he's ever had first place podium, I think, ever was at the Fuji Speedway round. He's never had okay. a first place win in a top-level drift competition, ever. That was his first time. And to top that off with the championship would be amazing. 
not often that you see Okoye jump the light as a chase car. No, he that is very rare indeed. Yeah, he needs he knows he needs to get right up against Minoa's door. Minoa's very unsettled right now. There, now he's better. But entering, coming up to inside cliff, inside, uh, outside zone one, he was very unsettled. Filling that out of zone there. Yukoi, quite shallow. It was. Staying with Minoa. Past the hairpin. Oh. Whoa, no, that's, whoa. Getting a bit messy towards the end of the track there. But Yukoi flicking it around, holding that angle. Now using the red line of that 2JZ. And now we need sunglasses all of a sudden. The sun just popped out <laughs> right there. Okay, let's watch this again. Yeah, see what happens here. So watch the lead car. Watch his entry. A bit of a wobble down the yeah. entry. Yeah. Oh, so look at his car the way it's, that. Yeah. Sending to angle and then pulling back angle, putting more angle back. Yokoi's doing a good job in the chase. Decent proximity. Poor line through there, but overall a good a good chase from Yokoi. It looks like Shinji right here slowed way down. Yokoi transitioned early but made it work and got through to the finish. So really nothing bad to say about Yokoi overall. I think the, just pressure, the pressure might have gotten to Shinji Minoa. Yeah. Yeah, very wobbly on his entry there. Didn't look 100% committed. Unlike Yokoi, who is always very smooth on his entries. And here we go. So Minoa on the left of screen. Right, one, two, three in favor of Masashi Yokoi. We'll be moving on to the semi final. So that is Shinji Minoa, currently second place in the championship. Knocked out. So I can't say for 100%. Sure, yep. But I think that maybe Andy Gray just won the championship. That may potentially be a championship win for Power Vehicles' Andrew Gray. That would be three in a row. Be. Of course, we have to find out 100%. We're not sure yet. But we will find out, of course, Andrew Gray going up, up against Jamaken in his next battle. But before we get to that, we have this battle, the old school D1 Grand Prix <laughs> battle. Both of these guys, D1 Grand Prix champions, Takahashi and Kumakubo, both taking out a championship. Takahashi more recently? More recently. But both of them are fairly similar time, uh, like 2005 and six, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, no. Takashi. I can't remember now. I'll have to look it up later. <laughs> oh, okay, a what do we have? What do we have? Start. Jump the light. So a jump start there. <laughs> I can just hear. Jump up. Uh, not, um, Wada Police is still screaming his head off in the background, doing the hype job for the... Uh, Extreme stunt guys. Yeah, he must have to do a lot of maintenance on his throat. Yeah, uh, he, honey and he goes for drinks. half an hour straight at yeah. one at at eleven. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty pretty intense. All right, we got thumbs up from everybody. Start light has been initiated, and off there they go. Takashi 2014 winner, ah. Kumakubo 2012 winner. Oh, okay. So fairly close together. I was, yeah. I was close. All right, here we go. Second. Okay, so the run between these two. Ooh. Whoa, look at Kumakubo. Look how fast they're going. Whoa. Takashi off, off track. Course. All four wheels off. And even though Kumakubo straightened after that, it doesn't matter because as soon as the lead car incompletes, the yeah. run is over. So that'll be uh, completely on Takahashi in, wow. uh, in that area. Did you see how fast Takashi yeah, was coming were, in? Uh, he's pretty that, aggressive. He, well, obviously, he went a bit too fast, going all four wheels yes off, sir. off the over the ripple strip, off the apron, all the way into the gravel. Let's watch this replay. Watch how fast. Watch the lead car, the yellow Mark X Gs. How fast he's going. Simultaneous entry. Yeah, look at the yeah. speed difference there. And uh, get, yeah, get back on the track. Understeering like crazy there. Uh, Did you see dear, that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of understeer before he went off. Similar to the uh, what we saw Mad Mike do in his battle, mm -hmm. understeering off at that section. That's a 
huge shame there. So Kuma Kuma in the lead again. <laughs> so that's an incomplete from Takahashi. Right. Takahashi now, to have any chance of either getting a one more time or moving on, would need to have um, a big error similar than the one he just did from Kumukubo in the lead. That would essentially secure him a one more time. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like they don't need to change positions because they're already in the right order. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kumukubo just got three quarters of a lead lap in right yeah. there. Yeah. He's going to do another lead lap now. And also Kumakubo <laughs> almost uh, having a sympathy off there as well, following him all the way in. Just uh, pulling off at the last second. Okay, so this time Kumakubo in the lead. Takahashi following. Kumakubo 2JZ. Both of these cars 2JZ. So Takahashi sliding oh, in there. That's Very nice. close. Oh, almost contact. <laughs> almost contact two or three times there. Transitioning back. Watch this. Watch the watch the chase car. He's going to tuck it in. That was so right close. on the door <laughs> of the lead car. A lot of very close moments yes. here. That was very nice from Takahashi. Multiple That's times. The like old you, uh, you could literally throw a blanket over them. That's how close they were. He'll come fix. So let's watch this replay. Kumukubo in the lead, Takahashi chasing. Kumukubo throws the car in here, not with as much, you know, speed aggression. or aggression that, yeah. that we saw from Takahashi. But he didn't but go off the track, though. Yeah, that's the other side of that, I suppose. Right on that white line. That. Came off a little bit early, not super early, just a little bit Watch early. Watch that guy set up here. Ready? Here yeah. we go. The way Dive. he throws the car in right Woo! here. Came within inches of Kumukubo's back wheel. A little bit lower angle through there yeah, from Takahashi. Yeah. Kumukubo... Nice transition. Well, not a really aggressive transition again. Not big angle or anything through there, but safe. Is that enough to make up for Takahashi's course out? I don't think it is. Hard to overcome a zero when there yeah. isn't another zero, right? That's right. There you go. So Kumakubo in the black. Alteza, one, two, three. Taking out Kuniaki Takahashi in the great eight. So Kumakubo moving on to the semi-final against Shinji Minoa. What? What's that? Hmm? He's going up against Yokoi. Not Minoa. Did I, did I write it down wrong? I think you did. What did I write? Sorry. <laughs> you were probably saying his name when you were writing it, and you wrote the wrong I, one. You're probably right. Yeah, uh, my apologies. Happens. Kumakubo versus Yokoi. Yes. Coffee, please. <laughs> <laughs> so Gray and Yamada. Again, we're not 100% sure if Gray already has won the championship or if he needs to win this right now to remain in the lead. But either way, he's going to fight as either hard way, as Either way, there's still a podium to fight for today. So Andy, taking a, looks like a very conservative run for the lead position. Very low angle from Yamato through there. Yeah, but similarly, the chase car, not really able to make much of an effect on the lead car's Run, he's just kind of there. And Gray, there. Right, a little bit wide the air, dropping a wheel off the edge of the track. Hmm. Just catching up to Andy at the end there, John McKen. Yeah, I wasn't impressed with the angle that he was carrying from the initiation to the beginning of outside zone one. Let's watch it again. Analyze this one more time. It's a so lead run. Nice decent thing. initiation from Andy. Yep. Yamada's, there's a little bit of distance right there between the two of them. You can see right there, Yamada's low angle, yeah. but pours it on as he gets through inside uh, outside zone one. Andy kind of controls his angle on the transition there. Doesn't do bad, gets out to outside zone two. Yamada doesn't have the proximity here, and his angle's quite a bit lower as well. You're going to see Yamada drop a tire right there, way on the inside. Andy doesn't do bad at the finish there could have been a little closer inside clip one could have had a better line approaching inside clip one but he yeah. got up on the rumble strip a little bit early but overall really um, a, a better lead run uh, than a chase run i guess you could say so bringing him back around for their second run this time 
Yamada will be in the lead position. Yeah, not an overwhelming run from either of these guys there. No. Definitely seen better from both. Yeah. So this time, Yamada in the lead. Now, this is where Yamada usually does better. Yeah. And we know that Gray can put on a heck of a chase run. It's the thing. Andrew Gray. Very good. Why am I calling him Andrew? Ande. Ande. Andeman. Uh, in the chase, he always chases quite well. Yamada also. Great leads from him. Let's see how deep That's they go into the first corner. Right Great initiation there from both these guys. Yamada right out to the edge of the track, slowing down at the last second there. Andy just keeping him at arm distance, slowly reeling him in. Watch the transition here. A fair way off the outer zone for both these guys. Good line there from Andrew Gray, very tactical line that he took. <laughs> Yamada cutting a course a little bit there to try and keep his speed up, going up that hill towards the finish line. Once again, not an overwhelmingly good run from either of these guys. No, you can't say that that was one of Andy's best chase runs. We know he's a real tactician when it comes to chase. Well, this is what I was going to say. That it was it was actually quite tactically good. This run, he uh, he he poured it on when he needed to, and just sort of kept Yamada away from him when he needed to as well. So you can see here, Yamada really slowing down right there. Andy modulating his speed very well, transitioning back. Andy, fair way off that in clip, but both of them off that clip there. And Andy, right here, watch this. Out to the outer zone right there. That was a great line to take, keeping his speed up, allowing him to catch up to Yamada slightly. And here again, just keeping the same sort of distance over the finish line. So a few little good points there, a few tactically good uh, maneuvers there from Andy Gray. Still, you've got to remember... These guys are going into that first corner sideways really fast. They've got a long run up. We're just waiting for another replay right now. One of the judges asked for the run one okay. replay. So, so run one. This is the first run. Yep. So this is the run where Andrew Gray is leading. I mean, at this point, it would make sense for Andrew Gray to be playing safe. That's still that's a that's just a nice clean entry there. There's mm -hmm. nothing really complain not wobbly, nothing no. you can really complain about. Nothing amazing, but a clean run right there. Perfect. Fills that outer zone. Switches back. Now Yamada. Right here. Yamada, very similar line. A little bit less angled than Andy Gray, but Andy Gray, a bit wide there. Yamada, nice and tight. Yamada, second half of the course. Very good second half of the course for Yamada there. Could almost be a, a fairly close to an even score in that first run. So if you're just joining us now, if uh, you're in Europe and you're just waking up first thing in the morning, actually it's probably still fairly early, you're probably not going to be waking up this early on a Sunday morning. But if you are with us, thank you for being with us here in Okayama, Japan for round five of the Formula Drift Japan series. So once again, another replay. So this is the second run. This is Yamada leading. Nice lead run from him. It's right about here. He slows down a lot. Looks like he was going to run a bit wider than he did. Slowing down as, mu as much as he could at the last second right there. And he kind of catching up. And right here, this line from Andrew Gray. Sort of a straight line from the outer zone two to outer zone three. And once again, that's not a... Yeah, Jamakan did the second half of the course a bit better than Andy did. It's actually quite a difficult run to judge. All right. But I do get the feeling this is going to be a unanimous decision. And maybe due to wet uh, technology over here, electronics, but we finally got we the go. scores entered that we were trying And there to. we go. I, yeah, I, that, I thought it was going to be that. Two in favor of Andrew Gray. One in favor of a one more time... So Andrew Gray gets the win and moves forward to the semi-final. So looking a bit more comfortable, Andrew Gray probably breathing a sigh of relief with that result. And I believe that win right there will cement Andy Gray's championship. Still, so we're so let's uh, we can forget about the championship for now. But 
because we still have a, ch uh, a battle to be won here today. Andrew Gray not, not guaranteed a podium yet. So next battle, Ichinagi Ishikawa. Is that a bit of contact already? So it looks like a piece of uh, the body, the oh, side maybe is, hanging off. This is getting Ooh. ugly. Ishikawa. Was that a big straight in there from Ishikawa? Yeah. So Ichinagi's uh, sidestep hanging off there. Usually that sort of thing is caused by some sort of contact. Yeah, we'll have to replay the tape, right? Yep. And side by side over the finish line. Ichinagi in the yellow 1V, Ishikawa in the black S14 Sylvia. Corky, which uh, means late model. Okay. It's not kooky, it's corky. Corky, yeah. gotcha. Right, here we go, entry. No. No contact. no contact at all. It just fell off. Just fell off on its own. And it looks like Ishikawa made that mistake all on his own. He was Ooh. way on the Ooh. inside there, straightened up. Is that going to be a zero? Yeah. For me, anyway, that's good. Well, an incomplete. An incomplete run. An incomplete from him. And over the finish line. Sorry, I was writing some notes in my own little world. As you do. As I do. Because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, there's going to be people asking questions. You're right. Why? <laughs> yes. In various uh, levels of uh, politeness and volume. And languages. And, la and language and, uh, and language colorfulness. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Or, <laughs> why? Uh, we don't or, get as many questions. Or feigned, in pol Japan. Or feigned politeness. Or, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't get the questions uh, here that we do at home generally. It does come up from time to time. Yeah. Some drivers just want to have a conversation after, maybe discuss. Hey, look, I mean, the, it's encouraged here. Like, at, uh, at regular track day, like, when usually at track days here, uh, just regular drift, you know, track days, it's quite often have uh, what they call mini dory cons mm -hmm. or a mini, uh, s you know, mini drift contest. And quite often it's usually a, like a, a D1 driver or some sort of famous local guy judging the competition. And it's encouraged, like, at the end of the day when the, the results are, you know, awarded, the uh, trophies are awarded, um, and you know the results are announced. Uh, people will quite often line up uh, in front of the uh, the driver and just sort of ask, "Okay, so uh, what did I do wrong? How can I improve?" And they'll say things like, "Oh, I really like you know this, but you're a bit slow, or your angle's really good, but you just mm -hmm. slow down too much. That's why you're losing all that speed." And uh, you know it's encouraged over here to yeah, ask sure. questions and improve. No, it's good to have that relationship with the drivers. I think. Sometimes there's a sense of uh, that th that it's a, an us versus them or them versus us. It's not that Look, way, we're, really. We're all kind of If you're sitting up here together, for you know? how many hours a year watching drifting, you want to watch good drifting. And, you know, this <laughs> That's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put it, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Second battle now, Ishikawa versus Ichinagi. Wow, aggressive entry from both these guys. Huge angle. Sliding out to that out of zone one. Ishikawa losing a lot of speed. He's smashing the limiter there. Yeah. In a clip. This is Ichinagi's chance here. Hmm. Ichinagi seemingly playing a safe... A safe play from him. A long way back. It, he's losing a lot of speed there. Yeah. Let's watch this replay. So remember, Ishikawa, huge understeer on the first run. So let's watch this replay. So entry from both these guys. Simultaneous entry. Very nice. Ooh, look at them switching back and forth there as they adjust their line. So out of zone. Ichinagi, a little bit better. Stay, uh, staying in it a bit longer. Ichinagi also out of zone. About the same there. So next out of zone. Fairly similar. Not really doing in the lead what Ichinagi did. Yeah, or what we were asking for either. He's making right. the way that he came off of outside zone one really early like that. He's saying he was trying to get away? Well, he wasn't trying to get away. I, I believe, I don't always think it's on purpose. Just trying to go right? as fast as possible. Or maybe it's a, an error, a mistake that was made that right. leads to him getting away. Right. Um, because he had a straighter line to come from outside zone one directly to inside clip one uh, than if he had filled the zone entirely so 
uh, makes it difficult to follow. So as you just saw there, the winner of that battle, Ichianagi in the yellow 1VR, going through to the semi-final against Andy Gray. That should be an interesting battle. As the weather has uh, actually gotten a lot better right now. It's uh, quite a few patches of blue sky. The rain has stopped. And we're about to start the semi-final here of Formula Drift Japan, round five. So we're going straight through. So our next battle, Yokoi versus Kumakubo, both very two very big names. People from uh, overseas who are into drifting should be fairly familiar with both these guys. So if you look at the qualifying positions of the people in the final four right now, Yokoi qualified first, Kumukubo qualified 13th, right. Gray qualified 18th, right. and Ichianagi qualified third. Right, so Andy Gray not uh, guaranteed a, a podium here. Yeah. On the other hand, Yokoi guaranteed at least third place. You got it. Because we don't run third place battles in FD. We go off qualifying position. Whoever had the highest qualifying position in the final four and loses their battle, uh, wins their battle. Yeah. Gets third place. Uh, lo sorry, whoever loses. Is, whoever loses their battle but has the higher qualifying position. You got it. All right, here we go. We're down to the final four here. Yokoi versus Kumakubo. He's coming Two in Two heavy hitters coming in, coming in very hot. Hot enough that he hit him and spun him himself. Wow, that, that. Uh, we've seen Yokoi. <laughs> we've seen Yokoi be collided into a couple of times so far. And both times just brushing it off, but that time, Kuma Kuma coming in that hot. So Kuma Kuma giving Yokoi a double-handed slap there, knocking him around. I like to see the aggressive driving like that. Yokoi's yeah. not, or sorry, Kumukubo's not leaving anything on the table at all. He's just going to drive as hard as he possibly can. Uh, he came in a little bit too fast there. Look, it's it, you know he's it's a one-off entry for him. Yeah. It's all another. You know, I mean, if you're not going to make, if you're going to lose, at least going to make it look good. Yeah. He's probably all laughing in. in his helmet right now. He probably. Yeah. yeah I, I bet he is. So watch this on initiation. Great initiation from Yokoi. Kumukubo was on the inside quite a bit. Ooh. He ended up tapping the rear with the back of his car yeah. and causing Yokoi to spin. There was nothing Yokoi could have done in that situation to oh. um, maintain drift. Uh, I put fault on Kumukubo in that in that in that situation. Yeah, I believe absolutely. the other two judges will do the same. So you can see instead of uh, Ooh. <laughs> instead of <laughs> really hitting him, it's like I'll try to get the car to slow down. Got on the brakes. Hey, that's over rotated. A, that can work. Like yeah. that that strategy can work some of the times, especially in the dry. If you rotate the car around that mm -hmm. far. You can uh, sort of wangle the rear end of your car behind the car in front so as you don't collide with them. And obviously, if you don't hit them, you can bring the, c the front of the car back around. I mean, we've seen that sort of thing before. Right. He we do could have potentially saved that. If that was dry, yeah. I think he could have potentially saved that. Right. And the other thing was that fought against your, uh, Kumukubo there was that he was... On initiation, you can see that he was further inside on the track. Yeah. Had he been more side-by-side, -side, the back of his car potentially could have gone behind Yokoi as opposed to... Because he was a little bit um, further in than him yeah. on the track, the back of his car hit the back of your core. Let's see if we can so. see some sort of reaction here. What's, what's he doing? <laughs> Look, he's apologizing <laughs> on the right of screen yeah. there. Kumakubo pulls up and makes the, uh, he puts his hands together. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if your hits him now. The Yokoi being a bit, bit sick of being run into by now. <laughs> here we go, second run now. Kumakubo with that massive disadvantage. Yokoi giving him a bit of Pretty space. Pretty fast, huh? Well, Too once fast? again, very fast. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, very far off track, yeah. Kumakubo. Four wheels off. He was on the. He, he treated that outside zone marker as an inside, inside clip. Inside clip, yeah. yeah. Whoa, keep it off the wall. There we go. Tandem drift through the center section. Yokoi Woo, not leaving transition. anything to chance. Nice. Oh, yeah, Yokoi. <laughs> That's going to be Yokoi through to the final here at round five. Let's watch this replay. 
Yeah, this is the sort of thing we came here to see. Kumakubo just uh, rotating in a little bit more gently. <laughs> Running a bit wide, yeah. I appreciate that Kumakubo did not hit that clip marker. He did a good job uh, of it. Too bad Yokoi did, but... Yeah, well, watch this helped. We care not for pylons. Smack. Watch this uh, transition here. Chase car. Woo! Looks like it was on casters there. Just swung around, swung yeah. around like a shopping trolley. Yeah, that was pretty good. So the only way Kumukubo can get a podium is if Ichiyanagi beats Gray, because then Gray will be the lowest qualifier. Right. All right, he'll be lower. He's 18. One, he's two, three 13. in favor of Masashi Koi. Sorry to cut you off there. No, that's okay. Going through to the semifinal up against the winner of this next battle, Andy Gray versus Kazuto Ichiyanagi. So you were saying that uh, the only way that, that Kumukubo can get on the podium now, right. since Kumukubo just lost that battle, is if Gray loses against Ichiyanagi, because Gray is qualified lower than Kumukubo. That right. would give Kumukubo third place. Okay. But if Gray wins, Ichiyanagi will get third. Yeah. Here we go. Right, here we go. Start. So Ichiyanagi in the lead, the angle king here today. In the lead, nice entry there from Ichinagi. Smooth entry, Andrew Gray leaving a bit of distance. Oh, Ichinagi really, really slowing down there. Still keeping his line very good though, but really low in speed. Comes a switch back, Andrew Gray. Out of zone, good line from both these guys. Taking that clip, here comes a switch back. Nice and early from Ichinagi. Well, careful, Andy. Don't throw it too hard. There you go, over the finish line. Safe. So Ichinagi, yeah, watch the entry from Ichinagi. He really, really slows down. Andrew Gray played this right. Good strats from him, giving Ichinagi a bit of space. So lead car, good entry, but right about here. Starts to slow down and yeah. loses a lot of speed. Andrew Gray just modulating his... Look at Andy, barely even squirming around there, yeah, but slowing Nagi down. Went really wide before outside zone one. Yeah. And uh, if he hadn't slowed down the way he had, he would have gone off the track. So that was his way of maintaining his lead position, I guess you could say. But Andy, like you said, did an ex excellent job in the chase position of yeah. maintaining drift, yeah. staying in proximity, not straightening, not making any errors uh, and managing to drive through that really slow portion of the track there, which shouldn't have been slow. But it's <laughs> an error by Ichinagi and uh, managed to get through it, though. So we've seen Ichinagi sort of do that driving a little bit here and there. So back up to the start line. Second battle between these two. This is the semi final. Second battle of the semi final. Whoever wins this battle will be going through to the final against Yokoi. If Andy loses this, it's going to be a fourth place for Andrew Gray. Right, here we go. This time Andy in the lead. Now he does have the power and grip advantage. Will he use it? Big angle on the entry there. Whoa. Andrew Gray. Okay. How are we calling this? Well, we'll Ryan Lance saying, we'll have to have a look at this yeah. again. And he definitely made an error in the lead position um, because that chase driver clearly didn't touch him or do anything to him, and he was already making that error yeah. uh, on his own. So Ichiyanagi maybe had nowhere to go due to Gray slowing down uh, so aggressively. So we'll have to watch this replay from multiple angles to see exactly what happened. All right, so this uh, right about now. He is in right, there, isn't he? He is in. He's dogging like an Alabama tick. What? Huh? Huh? Isn't it? That's from Predator. Is Predator. it? Okay. <laughs> what's his name? Jesse Vin... No, what's his name? The guy with the machine gun. The big... <laughs> He's dug in there like an Alabama tick. All right. All right the let's guy with the machine gun. Let's concentrate here. <laughs> All right. So Andy Gray looked like it was a good initiation, but he over-rotated. And he slowed way down. Look, he pretty much parked it right there. He's still drifting. Straightened up. Got back to angle again. I'm not a judge. So, yeah. No, that's... Um, you have to look at the circumstances of the of the low angle too. Is it you know at good ang um, at good pace, really maintaining, doing what you're supposed to, and the car goes to a low angle. But in that situation, he essentially parked the car, 
yeah. couldn't maintain drift. He hit the car straightened up, and then once he picked up enough speed, got back to angle. And Chianagi, we have to look at it again, but to really see if that was a, a reaction to Gray's over-rotation or if he just over-rotated on his own uh, and made his own mistake. I mean, let's look at this. The previous run, I mean, if, you, if you need to go silent and talk with uh, the other judges for yeah. a second, by all means, feel free. But looking at that previous run, uh, Ichianagi came in really slow, and Andrew Gray was able to adjust his drift according yeah. to that. So, I mean, that's comparable. Let's watch this again. They've just been a, a panic break. Yeah, it, lo it like looked Ichinagi. like a panic break because you have to look at where the errors were made too. Um, Ichianagi went wide. He went to the outside of the track where yeah. there was a lot more room to play around. Andy yeah. was over rotating, going to the inside. Yeah. Ichianagi at that point, where is he going to go? Where? What is he going to do in that situation other than, oh dear, I'm going to smash into this lead car right now. I'm going to get on the brakes to try to avoid it. Andy with his uh, crazy, what is it? 1200 horsepower something like that knuckles or whatever it is on the front of his oh, car the, uh, uh, yeah yeah the uh, um, hey man he was able to knuckles. turn into that enough that he was uh, able to avoid the spin so we'll see what the uh, result is uh, I don't know what I just did there there we go so will Andy be held at fault for that he could very well be because a lead run does need to be chaseable. If a lead run is not considered chaseable, Ichianagi. Two to Ichianagi. Three. All three drivers in favor of Kazuto Ichianagi. Yeah. So Ichianagi knocking out Andrew Gray. So Andrew Gray, fourth place today. And that uh, will give Kumukubo third place. So there you go, Kumakubo currently sitting in third place. And we have one more battle to go here. Yokohi versus Ichianagi, wow. Didn't expect that one, did you? Didn't expect, not. I didn't expect uh, that one. Would you like to explain? I think we're probably going to go to a commercial break. Okay, yeah, go ahead. yes we are. We're about to go to a commercial break. We'll be right back with this guy here, Ichinagi, up against Yokohi for the final battle. And also, we're going to get a little explanation of that battle between uh, Gray and Ichinagi, I think. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hello. Welcome back, everyone. To Okayama Circuit. What was that entry? I don't know. To the, uh, what was that? Trying to be a nice, soft radio announcer. So this, we're going to the final right now. This is why, actually why the finals are, at the final. Why are you not hyping everyone up? We are down, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> to the final here. Round five of the top 32 bracket. No, oh, sorry. The final, what am I doing? The final battle of the top 32. We are in round five. This is the last round of the year. The final of Formula Drift. The last battle of the last round. This is all you're going to see for the rest of the year in Formula Drift Japan. We have one battle to go now. First of all, let's get some things out of the way. Mm. Uh, we had a stall on the start line, did we not, with uh, mm. Jin Harino? Mm. So Jin Harino, uh, that was actually his engine shut down on the line. Yeah. That's why he did not get away from the start. So he tried to start it. Eventually it started, but the other car was almost initiating by the time his car started. That's so. it. So, uh, so rip to him. Yeah. Uh, next thing, could you please explain why did Andrew Gray lose to Ichianagi? Well, we looked at the cause and effect there. Uh, w when Gray was leading, he initiated the car over rotated like i was saying those massive crazy knuckles he has on the front of the car he was able to maintain angle not spin because of them but if you watch the replay gray as soon as he starts to over rotate ichianagi's behind him and all of a sudden at that very moment you see ichianagi get on the brakes right. and it causes the car to over rotate and then shoot him off the track right. itself yep. it was clearly an act of avoidance to not hit andrew uh, how could he have known that Andrew was actually going to save that? That looked like it would not be saved. Yep. Um, but Andrew was able to save it. Andy then straightened up, drove for quite a while straight, and then got the car back to angle. Yep. So uh, because of the, their proximity at that point in time. So let's watch this a replay of this. There you go. Yeah, it's because of the proximity at that point in time. Had there been a big gap and, and uh, Ichianagi spun on his own further back, right. then you'd have to say that that was independent. But This is what we're talking about right here. Right here. So look, as soon as he starts over rotate, you can yeah. see him hit the brakes, spin around. Um, at that point, it's clearly uh, an act of avoidance, yep. and Andy zeroed out 
or incompleted uh, multiple times there if you really want to, want to get into it. Yep. Um, poor Ichianagi really didn't have much of an option there. So that spin and subsequent off course from Ichianagi could not be placed on him. It had to be uh, blamed on, on Andrew Gray. Okay, so there you Unfortunately, go. Another yeah. replay here. That's a good angle to watch it from. Yes, watch it this. So Lee Kai, Andrew Gray. Okay, okay. And then spin. You see the it looks like yeah. an over-rotation. Yeah. So Ichinagi. Oh, shit. And you can see Hits that the instant reaction and the quick spin from Ichinagi due to the getting on the off-throttle and on-break, yep. um, causing him to, uh, to spin off. But from Ichinagi's point of view, and, you know, as drivers, we know that it's probably better to avoid a big crash at the speed that they're going there than, uh, than smash into each other. So Indeed, yeah. Yes. It could be uh, very dangerous to collide, especially with the driver's door yep. at that uh, that sort of place. So, yeah, right. slamming on the brakes. And I'd like to point out, yep. Kubo Kubo hasn't competed in three years, as you just said, and yeah. he just got himself on the podium. That man is talented. He's pretty skilled. That is some innate talent. That's not, you know, I've been driving. I get a lot of seat time all the time. Uh, he did that already. He can go away for a few years, concentrate more on the managerial side, like you would said, and still come back to an event in a borrowed car and get third place in a competition in the rain, at Okayama. It's pretty impressive. On a track that no one ever drives. Right, and yeah. he's never driven here either, so very impressive. Very good for him. So Ichinagi. Now, this sort of reminds me of the last round. Remember, what was the final at Okoibuki? Remember that? It was Mekua versus Mad Mike. Hmm. Now, that, <laughs> that battle, uh, we had Mad Mike, the quad rotor, twin turbo, uh, fantasy drift car. Mm hmm making all those brapping noises <laughs> versus Mekua in the street spec, you know, low budget, zero sponsor S15 Silvia. I mean, he lost, but yeah. it was still, you know, it was that it was that battle you'd like to see, like the underdog, low budget guy versus the high budget, high skill guy. And it's almost like that again. I mean, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from Ichinagi. Ichinagi has been involved in the Kansai drifting scene for a long time now. Uh, very skilled guy, but uh, maybe hasn't put quite as much, uh, I guess you could say, cash into the campaign as Yokoi has. Of course, Yokoi competing in multiple series mm -hmm. before. Uh, in all, actually, all he does uh, Formula Drift Japan, he does D1 Grand Prix, and he also did the FIA Drift event, he did. which was held in Tokyo a few weeks ago. So Yokoi, uh, a big program run by Yokoi. Ichi Anagi, what does he compete in other than Formula Drift Japan? I don't know. I hmm. believe he, well, of course, he competes in sort of the local uh, West Japan drift competitions. And who run the, how, what would that series be? Uh, like actually, I don't, I'm, I'm just sort of guessing. I mean, there's quite a, in, the way they run comps in Kansai, they're very sort of local comps. Like it's mm -hmm. just sort of local area guys all okay. competing with each other. So, um, I mean, one of the, oh, what are they called? Um, well, this is, of course, the uh, Kansai All Stars event, which is hilarious. Is it? Well, um, that's where you see those videos of guys doing like an entire course train. Have you ever seen those like yes. at, at Mayhan? Yes. Yeah, that's where you see that sort All of right. thing. All right, we are down to the final. Yokoi in the lead. Ichinagi chasing. Another David and Goliath battle here. But both these guys also very skilled. Let's see what sort of result we get from this battle. Some Who smoke. is going to get first place? Ichinagi running very wide. A straight and off course. Ichinagi. Yokoi completing his run. That's a big shame. And Ichinagi, he's already guaranteed at least second place. His first podium of the year, I believe, for Formula Drift Japan. I believe you're correct, but I have a poor memory for those things. So I'm, I really do. I, mean, you've I will got, take your word for you it. You have a lot to remember. I know that. So that's an unfortunate result here. So let's see what... what, what what caused this? So, initiation. Ichinagi, great angle there. Yeah. Yeah, Yokoi did a good job. He just went sailing past him. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like Yokoi sort of uh, went, see you later, and uh, mm -hmm. went forward when Ichinagi sort of went sideways. Yeah. Off the track there. Of course, uh, all four wheels off the road, into the gravel, gripping up. And Yokoi completing the run without any sort of problems. Watch this again. So from the side, it looks like a good run so far. Watch this. Yokoi is just like, I'm actually going around this corner. 
Yeah, I guess Yokoi did a better job of slowing his car down. Smoke. Yeah, there's been smoke at initiation and out at uh, outside zone one. But yeah, Yokoi just does a better job of entering fast and slowing his car down in such a gradual manner that it's not really apparent to us or anybody else. It, it right. looks very natural as he comes around there. Yeah. Ichi Inagi, on the other hand, threw the car in at speed, the same speed as Yokoi, and clearly doesn't have the the slowdown quite, you know, as... Ability. Yeah, like yeah. It's, he, he's not as um, adapted to that kind of uh, kind of thing. I guess the the high speed entry in the wet, trying to slow down to get because that's <laughs> that's more than a ninety degree corner right there. That's yeah, you actually come back uh, much sharper than a ninety degree. So it's a little deceiving. All right, here goes second run now. This is Ichinagi's last chance to make it into first place here today. Once again, huge speed from both these guys. Ichinagi running wide, losing all his speed. It's like what we saw before, Ichinagi versus Gray, and a straight from Ichinagi. Yeah. So I think uh, Ichinagi. Pressure was pretty high on Ichinagi. Very you have high, to be honest, right? Always doing very well in the in the dry conditions. Yeah. But uh, never making it this far. For some reason, the setup in his car seems to work quite well in the wet. But Yokoi. Just that one grade above. Let's watch this replay again. Yeah, you develop skills as you as you move, you know, on and, and compete in higher levels of competition. And um, Ichi and Nagi in this in this situation. I mean, he's still going in there at full angle. Yes, but <laughs> definitely not able to adjust the speed as well as Yokoi. Yokoi can go in really fast. Yeah. Adjust the speed, get himself through. Yeah. Ichiyanagi tries to throw in at the same speed and isn't able to um, to finesse the car through the corner uh, as well. Slow it down, uh, but th that's an art being able to get into a into that situation and slow the car down gradually, smoothly, yeah. without it looking uh, kind of choppy and, and break the course up too. Especially in these high speed wet conditions, that is a skill. And what, Ryan, what is that big bright ball in the sky? I, have, I don't I, know. I haven't seen it in a few days. I haven't seen it for a few days. It yeah. is actually the sun. The sun comes out right at the end of the day. We're going to have a nice dry uh, award ceremony. That's going to be a nice thing to do. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to uh, bring the top three drivers to the front and in front of the judging stand and give you the results. Let's make it official. So the final there. Yokoi versus Ichianagi. Wow, that sun is blinding off the uh, I can't believe wet that pavement. That sun is really bright right now. Yeah, it is. This is a really nice way to end the day. When end the season. Beautiful. In the season, it's been, the, at least it was consistently wet. That's sort of one thing that yes. we can be thankful for. Yeah, only near the end there did we start to see some tire smoke. Starts to see a bit of smoke. Yep. As the sun comes out here at Okayama. Look at the scene. Look how, look how dramatic it is right now. It is very dramatic. Dramatic way to end that you're going to take a photo. You should be taking a selfie with this. I know you're is that a, even going to be a big selfie, dude? All right. <laughs> we may. Nah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Is that even going to expose? Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that worked pretty good. Yeah, pretty well, right? Yeah. That is blinding. So right at the end, just, uh, uh, well, you know, it would have been nice to be sunny all weekend. There you go. <laughs> blue, look at that. Blue. What is that blue thing? I've never seen that color before. <laughs> all right, so we have some cars coming. It's like we're mole people sort of emerging from underground. <laughs> it's like, oh, the sun is blinding. Kumukubo, Yokoi, and Ichianagi. But a good time for it to happen. The sun coming out just in time for the awards ceremony. So as they come out, Kumukubo coming around in the 2JZ Alteza. The fans that stuck around through all that rain and wind are being awarded right now Yes. Uh, with this beautiful uh, sunshine. It's very nice. And we have in the background there, Yokoi, his S15 Sylvia, and Ichianagi. in his Nissan Wanvia. Oh, here come the uh, here come the girls. Yeah. We need to work on the spacing with these cars. <laughs> wow, that's uh, a... <laughs> 
That's not a great park job, is it? I love Kumukubo's suit. Because he does the taxi rides. That's right. In Kumukubo. The chaser and the, is it a, it's a chaser and a it's Mark a, II? Yeah, you can see there, Kumukubo, uh, his racing suit looks like a taxi driver's uniform. He's got the little uh, waistcoat. The tie. You know, the, and the necktie. Of course, that's all just uh, printed onto his uh, Sparco racing suit. Looks like a real gentleman. They also have uh, helmets that match as well. Right. Yeah. Because they are, they are fully sponsored by uh, Sparco. They get these things custom made in Italy. Ah, oh, what a dramatic looking uh, sort of light there. Shining on the on the wet ground. So we're about to oh, announce the podium here. In third place, from Team Orange, Nobushige Kumakubo, third place for round five. Jumping straight out of a, straight into a car. Hasn't been in a competition of this level for a while now. Straight into third place. It's a great result for him. His first result in Formula Drift Japan. And in first place in today's competition, Masashi Yokoi. Getting a first place podium here at round five. And of course in second place, amazing result. His best result of the year so far. Campaigning all year. Never made it this high. In second place, Kazuto Ichianagi. Team Zeke. Great result for him as well. Going to be great motivation going into the 2018 season. You will have to inquire about the design on the side of his car and let me know. I will. I'll DM you. All right. That's great. Find out. Yeah, find out. I'd ask him myself, but... It may, sure be, um, be may be misinterpreted. Well. So there you go. Yukoi... Looking at the uh, other competitions he's been in over the past few months, could be argued that uh, he's currently the best drift driver in the world, going by his uh, podium results here and there. Yeah, he does have a lot of seat time in different competitions, different uh, championships. Yep. He did come to Formula Drift in the U.S. as well a couple of seasons ago. Had some uh, varying levels of success there that I don't think has everything to do with um, him or his car. You have to figure into that traveling across the ocean, bringing your team, trying yep. to manage uh, in, a, in a foreign country and all of that. It's not easy, but he's had some great success in different series. I believe he won. Did he win a, an event this year already? He won uh, day one. He won D1. The, la the round that, the uh, round. yeah. yeah well, it. it looks like Kumukubo is what? Tearing up. Is he? Kumukubo is crying. <laughs> well, these dudes do tend to get a little bit emotional now and again. <laughs> They're only human. Well, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a big effort to make it to the podium here. Yes. You know, it's not just the uh, the competition. It's everything else. The road to it. You have to think about what they went through this weekend as well. The conditions they drove uh, through. Uh, disgusting. The different levels of competitors that they had to drive against. It wasn't easy to get to this point. That's our, that's our floor director there. He's the one telling us what to do. Okay, so, like I say, no Hanashi. Okay, so, our final words for this competition and also for the year. Oh, where do we begin? It's been a great year. So many uh, amazing battles Yep. Uh, we have multiple, even more than ever, uh, entries from overseas. It's good to see not only the Japanese guys, but also guys like Mad Mike, the guys from Hong Kong. Uh, we had the, the Korean guys this weekend as well. Australian. Uh, and, of course, Australia. We had Krista Jager. So becoming uh, not only a co it's a competition in its own, also some people treating it as a road to the USA, uh, some also seeing it as... Uh, competition which is uh, the winner of which can uh, dominate the local competition as well so we have here first second and third place Yokoi Kumakubo in third place 
Ichinagi in second place. Great way it ends here. Thankfully, the, the rain has ended. And uh, unofficially, Andy Gray. I would have to say at this point. We have to say this. We have to get 100% confirmation on that. Yep. But with that said, thank you very, very much for being with us here on the internet for wherever you are all around the world for the 2017 series. It's been a lot of fun calling this. I've had a, a few different announcers here <laughs> doing this with me. Uh, you know, uh, Ryan Sage, Ken Gushi, and this time Ryan Lantain. It's been a lot of fun. Looking forward to seeing the 2018 series. What will that bring us? I can tell you, a lot of good drifting. Yes. Okay, so last words. This is Alexi Smith, otherwise known as Noriero on YouTube. Check it out. <laughs> Got to slip that in there. Of course. Because here with Ryan Lantain. Thank you for being with us here for Formula Drift Japan 2017 series. We'll see you next year. Bye for now. Have a good off-season, everybody.